right, Matriarch is a brand new Hulu original horror film that was released tomorrow. We're just, <laughs> we're in the, uh, the we're future. in the future right the past, now. the future. Yeah. We're everywhere, oh, man. Oh, where the hell I was. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm in the past, present, and future. What? I'm everywhere. No way. <laughs> um, so, this is about a woman who is dealing with some psychological issues. Yeah. Some bulimia. Yeah. Some freaking all sorts of shit. She was, this chick she's is messed up. messed up. She's on drugs. She's drinking. <laughs> she's, she, oh man. Um, and she decides to return home uh, to her mother's. Uh, they have an estranged relationship, and they also have a strange relationship. Mm-hmm. And um, when she gets there, um, her mom is, uh, well, I mean, I guess that that can't be revealed. But all I'll say is this is a body horror movie, mm-hmm. um, but it's also mixed with kind of folk horror Mm -hmm. um and it has an atmosphere and also a feeling of slower burn drama centric um character driven pieces like films from this year or in the last few years um it had feelings and flavors of men Mm-hmm. It had a feeling of something like Moloch. Mm-hmm. It had feelings of stuff like um, The Dark and the Wicked, uh, the movie Relic. Mm-hmm. So if any of those movies are, are, are types of films that you are drawn to and you like that style of film where there's some things going on that make you go, what the hell? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, not everything is spoon fed to you and things get really, really weird in the end, as they do with all of those movies, especially men, um, then this is probably going to be one for you. Um, I quite liked it. Um, I think this is definitely a film that you need to sit on and think about a bit, then rewatch it later, and, and, and I think you'll get a better grasp of what's going on. Um, overall, I think I understood most of it, Mm -hmm. but I still have some questions because I, I couldn't play, put together like connections of certain characters or moments. And I was like, wait, hold hold on. What's going on here with this? And and I think it, I think it would, it would be very well uh, suited for a second viewing. Mm -hmm. Um, but but overall, I, I did quite like it, and 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 um, I would put it around the same level as something like a relic, um, which I which I quite liked, and I think uh, it has a lot of like symbolisms and metaphors and 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 stuff like that, and and is attached to um, folklore of the region maybe that it's set in. Mm-hmm. But um, performances are all great. Um, they did cast. Now this kind of comes into play, but the the casting of the daughter and the and and uh, the mother, um, who's uh, the mom's played by Kate Dickey, who we've known from freaking everything lately, uh, the Northman, and um, she's in The Witch, of course, she's in Game of Thrones, um, but uh, they're only ten years apart in age in real life, so it's kind of funny, but um, that actually makes sense in the film. Uh, but overall, what do you think? I, yeah, I really enjoyed the movie. Um, I like the atmosphere that's set up. I, I like the performances from everybody, especially um, the main character and her mother. I think that those are all, re- you know, it's really strong uh, performances. And um, like you said, I think it's highly symbolic, highly metaphorical. And I was really into all of that. Um, and I actually really loved the ending. I thought that it was super weird, but it made sense, and um, I, I love the imagery and everything. The visuals, I think, are really, really cool. And the body horror parts of this, you know, it made me uncomfortable, which is what I, I want body horror to make me feel like I want to peel my skin off. <laughs> and that's yeah. what this, you know, it, it had that effect on me. Um, so I, I would definitely, I would recommend it. But as you said, if you like any of those other films, that would be kind of your, your baseline for it because it, I could see it being a movie that, you know, if you're not into slow burn, weird, atmospheric 
you know, family drama, psychological drama type of horror movies, like you, you wouldn't enjoy this. Yeah, you'd find um, it boring. And yeah, you'd find it boring. But if you like those types of movies like us, then I think that this is a, a great, uh, a great film to watch. Um, I, I, I did feel that I, I, I think I fully understand what was going on, but maybe I am a little like you where there's a couple things that I could, uh, with a rewatch, you know, really fill in um but overall i felt like it wasn't so weird that i didn't that i was lost that i didn't know what was going on like there is a grounded you know a grounded story that's happening around all the weirdness so i just kind of felt like that added you know more of the horror that was in the weirdness rather than any confusion um okay. yeah i was really into it so yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well we can talk spoilers really quick um so if you haven't seen the movie, you can shut it off. Yep. Um, so yeah, what do you? What's your take on this black ooze oil goo stuff that comes into her body when she dies? So I thought that initially, and I guess this is sort of still where I'm at with it, but. I feel like the black ooze is, I mean, it's supposed to be from this uh, mother figure that they're worshiping. The matriarch. Entity, the matriarch. But I think that it is symbolic for, like, genetic, addictive, and, um, like, mental illness. Like, these personality traits that are passed between uh, parents and their children. Uh, that's kind of what I thought of it, especially because I felt like the, I mean, it's not just her and her mom that have it though. It's everybody in the town, right? Because it's like a symptom of them gaining like extra life or longevity from the matriarch. Uh, but at least with, with the main girl, it really felt like she was battling, uh, mental illness basically and it's i mean it's evident in the beginning she has addiction problems she has the eating disorders and um it's sad because she's very unhappy and it's like nobody in her life is really there for her like the one girl that she calls over to sleep with in the beginning kind of like wants to leave because she just keeps doing cocaine like the whole time that they're hanging out and uh well i mean i got more of the impression that she's a committophobe and that obviously with the girl that she meets later in the movie in town, she had a relationship with her and then she ditched out when things got tough, mm. right? Like she had a, she had a negative relationship with her mother, um, which we find out in the movie that her mother is actually the demon matriarch, mm -hmm. the character, but her, um, acting mother in this. Um, but she had a relationship with this girl. Her mom got sick, uh, and she, her mom died because she, this is the only family in town that has not really fallen to the dark side. The dad is still a believer in Christ and follows um, that religion. And everybody else um, has really fallen for this new religion because this new religion, um, you know, has payment up front. Yes. But the payment up front comes at a price, right? Um, and it's the Christ believer that doesn't get anything now it's, it's, they reap the rewards later. Right. So it's kind of like, um, it's when you want the rewards, but, but everything always comes at a price. But, uh, what I took from the, from the scene with the girl that she was having the, um, sex scene with and her mm -hmm. house before she went back home, she was like, move in with me. And the girl, you know, pressed on that because, she, uh, you know, she's like, well, as what? Mm -hmm. And she responds, you know, oh, as a friend or a girlfriend or whatever. And she's mm -hmm. like, which one? And she was just kind of like brushed that off. And the girl then was like, well, it's time for me to get home. And essentially what I took from that scene is that girl wanted more. And this girl just wanted someone to lean on. But she wasn't comfortable either A, committing uh, B, which is and or um, exposing herself as a lesbian. I, I don't know which or if it's both. 
Um, but I, I think it's maybe the former on that. She just has commitment issues because of her mother and abandonment issues mm-hmm. because her father died before she was even born and she never had a relationship with him. So I think that girl was just very off put by the fact that she booty called her in the middle of the night, then tells her like, I want to be with you. And then she's like, well, how do you want to be with me? And it's like, well, I mean, I don't know, but it's like, oh, you just want to lean on me. You just want me to be here. So you have a crutch, Mm -hmm. but you don't want to actually commit to me. And then when she goes home, she has the same thing going on with the girl in her hometown. Like we were getting serious and then you bailed and left me with a mom that got ill and died and you never contacted me again. So she's got these horrible commitment issues. And when she's talking to this girl on the couch, it just seems like she's like, you know, I'll be with you, but I'm not going to like be with you, be with you, but I need you to be with me so I can get something from you, which is actually kind of like symbolic towards what's going on with the matriarch in this. It's like, you know, I, I want something from you. I need something from you, you know? Yeah. And she has to give back to it in the end. Um, but it's like a give take relationship. But I saw the, the, the ooze maybe even symbolic as like, um, you know, as you, I liked what you were saying though about like um, almost genetics and how this is like, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, tainted, mm-hmm. tainted genetics. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also kind of saw it as, uh, you know, obviously um, the mother's uh, milk that, mm-hmm. that gives life, you know, and she's feeding her her children. Yeah. With this. Um, I, I mean, I think you're, you're right about the commitment thing. I just, that kind of, I think that's a good point, but, um, uh, yes. So the, the thing that I really like about the movie is that the matriarch, it's very like mother earth, right? Like everybody dies and we return to the earth at some point, right? Like our sure. bodies rot, all life that dies rots. And then, you know, there is that rebirth. And I felt that this was just really encapsulated in, um, in the matriarch. And so it's like, it's disgusting. I think they even call her like the mother of rotten rebirth. Um, so, you know, like all of the black goos and the bodies, like, you know, putrefying and everything, like it's disgusting, but it's like through that, they are also able to get the rejuvenation and the, the, um, the vitality and everything if they, you know, submit and, and give something to her. Um, so I just, I really liked that it's a pretty on the nose metaphor because it's like this giant, you know, mother creature. It's like um, snakes coming out of her I mouth she or looks something. So like cool. Medusa, it's it's like, like worms. It was like yeah. worms. And I thought she looked so cool. And I love like her holding that fully grown man. And like, I just am, I'm definitely, I think I, I said it to you too when we were watching this. Like, there's been a few films this year that I feel like I've really focused on like motherhood and like the dark side of motherhood. Yeah or the, like the dark version of the mother figure or archetype. And I really am into that. I just think it's super fascinating. And this film, obviously it's like exploring so heavily, like how, (laughs) how messed up you can make your kid as a mom, you know, like just that, that abusive mother. And, you know, when she goes to, when she goes to visit her mom, there's like a bunch of scenes where she'll like walk into her daughter's room and just like yell at her while she's sleeping and then she'll like be banging pots and pans and like really heavily trying to like make noise. Psychological warfare. Yes, which obviously I was just like, that's such an abusive tactic to do. And she because... even drags her outside mm-hmm. in the middle of the night mm-hmm. and leaves her out there. Just a horrible. Which, I don't even know what that is. What is it's it, it's antagonizing her or it's like prepping her. I feel like she yeah she's trying to like sacrifice her is what I was getting from from the dragging thing. But, um, oh, she was trying to drag her out to like the barn where that chick yeah. was and throwing you. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and she, uh, like, started to stir. Mm hmm. Um, but yeah, just the, you know, the manipulative, like I'm dying and like the trying to play on the sympathies of, of your kid and like, you know, guilt trip them into loving you. Like all of that stuff is so, it's horrible for a father to do, of course, but like there's something about like seeing women do do it to their children that's just like really, really disgusting. And you know, her the daughter is not really a good person in my opinion either. No. Like she's very, no, that's what she says to her boss. Yes, like I'm, you know, you're 
uh, what was it? Like, I'm she not, was like, I'm not a replacement. It's not my fault. I'm not a replacement for your kid or something. Like no, she specifically mentions that her daughter died. Yes. It's like something about her, like, daughter's death. Yeah. Like, uh, stop. Um, something along the lines of, like, um, you know, stop trying to fix me. Yeah. It's not, I'm not your daughter. Or, mm-hmm. like, uh, it's not my fault your daughter's dead or something. Mm-hmm. It was really really twisted it's harsh yeah Yeah. it's because she's i mean she's in pain right like she's abused and therefore she becomes the abuser as well like no excuse of course but that's just we're just seeing the cycle um and even like the scene when she's in the very beginning she's like walking by this young mother and and uh her baby like it's it's the generational thing right like that's what's interesting the the young mother is like feeding her baby and, critique her. Yeah, she's like critiquing and she's very interesting. And, that actually um, reminds me of a really wild scene from this where she has a dream where that mother's eating her baby's yeah. face. Yeah, I was Which I say. think is like, um, that's symbolic, right? Of like the mother who's, who's uh, you know, got some Munchausen's type of thing. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's Mother Earth eating its, eating its children, mm-hmm. right? Eventually... You know the the planet has birthed you, has given you life, but eventually it's it's calling back, it's taking you back mm-hmm. to it. Which I think you know this film obviously shows the horror in that, but I I also think that there can be a beauty in it too, right? Like returning to your you know to Mother Earth, like it's it doesn't have to be scary, but it is also scary. Like it's sure. both at the same time. And uh, this uh, this film is obviously it's all about the horror of it, but yeah, that scene is. Uh, the dream sequence is really interesting. And um, there's also, there's a lot, honestly, there's a lot to unpack with the film. And sure. I feel like it definitely would be good to rewatch it sure. because there's like stuff with her mom and this like sex journal, which is, you know, kind of part of the ritual things that yeah, she's like doing for the town. After they suck mm-hmm. the, the freaking oil out of her titties. But even just all that stuff, yeah, that the orgy scene is pretty wild yeah um but just yeah i don't know all the stuff with like the sexuality of her mom and her judging her mom on it and how like i guess you could say promiscuous her mom is like she's ranking all of the the penises in the town well, yeah she's sleeping with everyone's husbands she's sleeping with but their that's husband. like payment for what they're getting yeah but i guess what i was gonna get at with that is that like so she has like something in her journal is like i love penises and her daughter's gay so well, I was kind of like, that's interesting. That's something like, I guess, like, I like penises. Like, I found, I found, like, basically, like, I've come really to weird. the realization yeah. that I, I guess I do like penises. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. And then she said the anal was pinnacle in that journal, too. Yeah. It was pretty funny to look at that kind of stuff. But, it, you know, I just think there's probably some sexuality stuff between, you know, like, the, the mother and the daughter. Not that they, like you know, were not that there was like molestation or anything, just it's interesting to me, the hypersexuality of the mom now and that her daughter is gay. And I'm not necessarily insinuating that that's a result of it. I just find it interesting. Sure. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot. And, and, uh, I'm not really sure what to make of this car sequence that continues to keep playing out throughout the film Mm -hmm. where this, couple is like making out in the car then it slowly degrades Mm -hmm. throughout the film and they keep cutting back to it and like that guy is like still alive from what i can tell and is being latched onto but this girl's body is like dead but still like trying to i don't know if he's sucking the oil out of her or if she's she, I don't know what the hell's happening in that scene. It's gnarly looking, though. I don't know either. I They're don't, becoming, I like, don't fused know. together, but he's still alive, and she appears to be, like, a hollow corpse. Uh-huh. Like, maybe they were trying to, like, perform the uh, something on their own, and it was I failing. Like, I, I don't know what that scene was. It's weird, really weird stuff. I'm into it, though. And then like, the tree... With all the pledges on yes. it, which I guess they're asking like for their wish. Yeah. This is uh, this is funny because yeah. this is very reminiscent of something we watched tonight as well, mm-hmm. which is a segment from VHS 
ninety nine. Mm -hmm. There's something in there in Ozzy's dungeon mm -hmm. that, was that is similar ish. Similar ish. Yeah. That was like, huh, this is weird. Yeah. Uh, but you're as you said, like in Men and other movies, mm -hmm. there's this like emphasis on uh, motherhood. Yes. Um, being incorporated into the imagery of horror this year for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, ultimately uh, a very deep cool film mm -hmm. um you know she ends up defeating this uh thing in the end getting everyone killed and then she herself returns herself to the place where her father died and her father died i guess um to sacrifice himself to create her mm -hmm. so she is like he really did give her life with his life um but then she then returns herself to it so maybe a new life came out of that maybe and maybe she broke the cycle mm -hmm. and that you know maybe maybe all of what's dead around her she's now being rebirthed mm -hmm. and hopefully free mm -hmm. of that stuff i don't know i don't, I don't know, know. i don't know what her her suicide is in the end yeah. this also had uh this also reminded me of scenes from uh, under the skin with scarlett johansson mm -hmm. um but yeah i i just i don't know exactly what to make of everything and um, we're not here to give an ending explained video for sure. We're just here to talk through things with you guys and we can chat in the comments below um, yeah. and, and see what your guys' interpretations of things are because that's, that's more fun. I don't, I don't like being the asshole who's like, this is what this means and this is the <laughs> only explanation. No, everybody's got their different interpretations and we all watched it. Uh, hopefully you've watched it at this point and, yes. and you can tell us what you thought of everything mm -hmm. and the symbolisms and the metaphors and uh, the lore. Maybe you guys know of some folktale like this. That's, uh, I don't know where this film's supposed to be set. I know Katie Dickey is Scottish and her accent is Scottish in this. Yeah. Um, but everyone else, Somewhere I don't in know. the UK. Sure. Um, cool but stuff though. Let us know. Yeah. Um, what you guys thought of this film mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, subscribe. You probably okay. already are. But Follow everything not. in the descriptions below. Yes. Come to our Patreon watch party tomorrow where we're doing Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. to celebrate our wedding yeah. in 11 days and counting. Mm -hmm. We got the marriage license. Yep. We got the strap-ons. We got a lot got, of those. We got all that stuff. We got stuff. the lube. We got a couple no lube. thousand gallons. No lube. <laughs> Never mind. Going throwing out dry. All, <laughs> all right, guys. Let us know. It went off the rails in the end. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>